Approaching quadrant four zero north one three five. Altitude thirty six thousand thirty five thirty four thirty three. Coming down at Mach one zero point nine. -er. Can you identify it? Uh, negative. It's not one of ours. The nearest hardware is a Russian weather satellite. A malfunction may have kicked it out of orbit. Altitude eight thousand. Closing at Mach one. No shoots. It's going to sink. Endpoint position. Speed. Touchdown and angle of entry. Now, uh, tracking and range are locked on, sir. We have a fix. Coordinates Delta Niner, K17. Here is U.S. Navy Deepwater Recovery Vessel Pearl Harbor. Intersect authorized to conduct emergency operations. Use civilian research vessel Royce Explorer, San Diego. Four sections, 30 minutes to dive zero. Urgent. All agents prevent Royce salvage team from recovering satellite Voyinia Pacifica at all cost. Red alert. Prevent recovery of satellite by Royce salvage team at all cost. Uh, this is Leonard Briscoe, director of the Intersect Support Group. We're uh, missing one of our men. Special Agent Sam Casey assigned to the salvage dive. Special Agent Casey is not on board. Not on board? Affirmative. The section chief checked him out at 1430. He's flying Air Sea Rescue. Air Sea Rescue? The helicopter off the stern. We're on countdown. He's due in the bottom of the ocean in 30 minutes. What is he doing in that helicopter? Sir, he's gone fishing. Fishing? current running at 16 knots and that's a blizzard so snap onto the safety cable or you'll blow away we've got a grapple hooked into the i need somebody with a phd in oh, physics I'm not sure my zipper's stuck i'm sure those of you from the intersect met the president of royce industries mr charles edward royce Since thanks i'll return the favor on sometime <laughs> you can on the present situation much better than i can mr royce thank you the readings ranged on a metal surface which the intersect support group has analyzed as stabilizers now, unfortunately, the whole mass shifted about 10 minutes ago and messed up the configuration. This is Mr. Driscoll, Director of International Security Technics. He'll give you the intelligence background. 
A Navy tracking vessel identified this hardware as a Russian weather satellite. However, fleet intelligence says it's a lot hotter than that. They seem to think it's some kind of a new secret weapon, an atomic-powered laser. Mr. Rice. Thank you, Leonard. Now, the soundings tell us that the tapered end is downside, away from the safety cables. That puts the hoist rings underneath. Yes, but uh, if you can't locate the rings, then sling the cable around the stabilizers. The Royce Industries team will go down first, locate the rings, and hook on. Rogers? Well, we're set. The last man down will be from the Intersex Support Group, Sam Casey. He'll check to make sure that everything's hooked up properly. Now, he'll be carrying a communications pack, so don't get fouled in his gear. Any questions? Dive officer. Ten minutes to dive zero. Let's go. Wish I could go with you guys. Good luck. Thank you. Could you get my fins, please? Get in close to the power pack. It sounds like it's downside. Did you set the timer? Four minutes. Plenty of time to get away. What about the last man? Can't be helped. Dive zero. Salvage team over the side. Get some rest. Is he all right? Yeah, he'll be fine. It's uh, tension. Bothers him. It uh, brings on the angina. Part of his inheritance, I guess. <laughs> Royce Industries and a weak heart. But he rules Royce Industries with an iron hand. Or are you the iron hand? Oh, no. I have the title of executive director, but uh, he's the man with the iron fist. Shall we? <clears throat>
Zero minus ten. That's my number. I gotta go, Abby. Pardon my tank. Let's see your chronometer, Sam. You wound it, Abby. You wound it. Seven minutes, and now it'll take longer. Abby, I didn't know you cared. Of course I care. You owe me 20 bucks from Sunday's ball game. Last man over the side. Check Sam, can you read me? It's cold out here. Can you see the salvage team? Well, I can feel them on the guideline. You're doing fine. Yeah, I see their headlights are coming up now. Did they secure the cable? Well, they couldn't locate the hoist ring, so they uh, hitched up a sling, it looks like. When you get down there, we'll test it for load bearing. So long, guys. You're looking good. All systems A-OK. -okay. Push it in. Clothing. Two radiation suits. We gotta bring him up. See if he's still hooked to the safety cable. Winch operator, take up the safety line. How fast? All he's got. Ben's at the least of our worries. Just get him in here. Rolling at 30. Any faster, you rip off his tanks. Are you sure you can handle the radiation? If we keep the decompression chamber isolated, we can bring them aboard. Dr. Lawrence. Get a radiation suit ready for me. I'm going with you. Hurry! We'll need to come there here. Cardiac support. Pressurize to dive maximum and follow the table. Chris, they're going to be alive, do you? Open the chamber door. Thank <laughs> you. 
I got a pulse. He's alive, Leonard. Help me turn him over. Let's get his face plate off. I don't see anything. It's empty. No. No, I, I, I feel his skin. I feel his forehead. I, I feel his face. Something's there. It's him. He's here. He's alive. And invisible. He's going to die if we don't get him on life support. Is he wounded? I can't tell. His pulse is erratic. Wait, look. The invisibility. It, it seems to spread outward from his body. His wetsuit's transparent. The field of invisibility is spreading. It's like a sheet. No, there's no sensation. It just disappears. Leonard, quick, get the respirator. What's wrong? His pulse, I can barely feel it. I think it's working. His pulse is getting stronger. We're gonna save him, baby. A little man, invisible. But how can we keep it a secret? We've gotta get him ashore. We use bandages from the first aid packet. Okay, put on the breastplate. 
I'll hook up the oxygen. You get the cables. you out of it. Leonard? I'm right here, Sam. We brought you back to Intersect. You're in the radiation section. How do you feel? Kind of weird. You've been mumbling about some kind of light. Did you see something? I can't remember. What's in my chest? We have you hooked up to the life support system. No, I care a No, Sam. But you suffered an unbelievable jolt. Like being hit with compressed lightning. And it's affected your cellular structure. Well, come on, Envy. Don't give me a PhD thesis. What's the matter with me? Why am I blindfolded? Lie down, Sam. Why are all the bandages? I don't feel any pain. What is it? Radiation burns. Is that it, Envy? We'll talk later, Sam. Why all the mystery? I need plastic surgery. Fine. Sam, you don't need plastic surgery. Now take it easy and get some sleep. Now that's an order. You've got to rest, Sam. Please. Okay. <laughs> Understand? I'm not dead. I'm not crazy. But I got no head, no arms, no body. But I'm here. That's great. You're steady enough now. But it weren't for this life support gear, we'd have lost you. Lost me? What do you call this, Leonard? According to the research data, the radiation distorted your DNA molecular field structure. Oh, fine. Now, what are you going to do about it? Well, we're working on it. Every department around the clock. Abby's running the program. Sam, the entire Atomic Research Division is jamming their computers. They've come up with a set of equations that correlate with the hologram research. Abby, forget the scientific jargon. There's just one thing I want to know. Is it permanent? You don't know, do you? Not yet. It's not very comforting, guys. Sam, you've come this far. With any luck, we'll find the answer. First, you've got to find the problem. Alive. No one could live through that. I just spoke to Driscoll. They're treating him at their atomic research facility. He's on the life support systems. Can we get to see him? No, no visitors. They got him locked up in the isolation wing. Mr. Royce, has there been a report as to what actually triggered the flare up? No, nothing yet. But Driscoll promised to keep us posted, so keep working on it. We've got troubles. No, we don't. I'm telling you, there's no way he can survive that. Could he have seen that mine? How can he have seen the mine? I hid it way down underneath the power pack. What if he did see it? Would he know what it was? Sam's an SIA dropout. He's trained in ordnance. Yes. We have got to get in to see him. How do you propose to do that? I'll have to work it through Royce. Look, Abby, you've tried everything. Vector analysis, spin resonance, equations Einstein never heard of. You've heard of the Lorentz factor in subatomic parity? Nope. It happened to be my thesis at Carnegie. Fantastic. The answer is still no. 
I am never wrong. The research agrees with me. There is a stability factor that will bring you back to visibility. Are you saying I'm unstable? Your DNA helix is out of whack. Don't you ever mess with my DNA helix. You don't even know what it is. Yeah, well, just uh, keep your hands to yourself. I need the results on run number 163, the DNA helix factors. It's still in the computer. That's easy for you to say. Tell research to feed in the hologram data. We'll send you the printout. I hope you realize your little problem has put the entire intersect step on triple overtime. Yeah, well, after all that hard work, all you learned was how to lace me up in this street jacket. How else am I supposed to keep you in line? <laughs> Sam? Sam, are you okay? Not really. Hold on, don't move. I'll be right back. Sam. Stabilizer on. Crossing over. Shutting down. And out. Disconnect. Well, I can't tell anything. Is he breathing? Fly by the instruments. Keep an eye on the pulmonary. Stabilizer up to speed. His heart's stopping. I'm losing his pulse. Give him time to take hold. It's down to a straight line. Don't touch him. His body is part of the circuit. He's gearing close to a thousand volts. Look. He's fluorescing. He's building up a counterfield against the invisibility. The field is thinning. It's melting like ice. Any change in the cardiac? Straight line. If he's gonna make it, he's gotta start now. Come on, Sam, pull through. His blood chemistry's hitting the red line. He's just seconds away from brain damage. Give me the cardiac booster. Only one. Gabby, the current should be electrocuted. Not if I'm grounded to the circuit. Ready. One, two, three, contact. Heartbeat, we've got it, it's moving. My hand, get an insulated wire. You all right? Yeah, I'm okay. Look. So glad to see anybody my whole life. <laughs> Still there? As long as you don't pull the plug, you'll stay steady as a rock. You know, 
feet are really great things. People just don't appreciate their toes. This little piggy went to market. Well, I don't this get too carried away. You're not out of the woods yet. Hey, I'm alive, and I'm visible in living color. No, Sam, you've got to get it through your head. That machine is stabilizing you. It counters the invisibility field. Without that DNA stabilizer, you fade out permanently. Wait a minute, are you telling me I just gave up that nice life support system to spend the rest of my life handcuffed to this electronic nurse here? We're working on a miniaturized version, something you can carry around. What, like a 50-pound pacemaker? Nope, not like a 50-pound pacemaker. Like a digital watch. Give me the design section. We had to be certain that the circuits would bring you through the transition, so we started you out on the mothership. Design control. This is Dr. Lawrence in radiation. We're ready to test the micro unit. Code, ma'am. Minus one. Okay, it's on its way. You know, now that I'm visible, maybe we ought to call that plus one. <laughs> Casey into question him. We know he's in the isolation wing. If Driscoll tries to stall me, find your way to him. Get some answers. Mr. Driscoll. Thank you, Bob. Driscoll here. Tell him I'll be right there. Abby? Do you deal with it? I'll deal with Rose. Believe it or not, this is an exact replica of the large version. Miniaturized down to the size of a digital watch. Fantastic. Can I put it on? Sure, but... You see these gold circuit contacts? They must stay in contact with your skin or you go invisible. What if it runs down? It can't. It's powered by plutonium and cobalt chips. An atomic battery. That's right. But you can turn it off. This button, it changes the frequency. You press that and you go invisible. Can I flicker on and off? Like a road blinker. All right. For the man who has everything. Come on, get the shackle off of me. All right, Sam. But remember, it's got to stay in contact with your skin. Because if anything goes wrong, you've got to connect back with the mothership or you fade out for good. Abby, will you quit talking and get this thing off of me? Okay, okay. I got it straight from the SIA. They intercepted a message from Russian intelligence to someone in the salvage group. In our salvage group? They broke the code this morning. Three words, prevent satellite recovery. So they're saying the explosion was sabotage. The State Department wanted to press for an all-out investigation, but I persuaded them that we could handle it internally. Good. Do they have any suspects? Casey. Casey? Casey was injured. He was clumsy. He got caught before he could get away. They're crazy. Casey was a trained agent. That's exactly what I mean, Driscoll. Why did the SIA give him a pink slip? An honorable pink slip. And not because he wasn't good. He was. They just couldn't cope with him. Well, we've got to question him. No. He's not up to it yet. Look, we've got a problem, both of us. Now, someone obviously has sabotaged that operation. And it could have been one of your men just as easily as mine. So let's each of us investigate his own crew, every one of them. Then compare notes. And let's keep it just between us. Sounds good. Let's do it. By the way, just I owe you an apology. I felt we had to question Casey, so I sent in a couple of my men behind your back. I'm sorry. I'll call him off. What's that? His and hers? Right. They're exactly synchronized. Oh, don't tell me you're going to disappear. No. This is a monitor unit. It picks up what yours is doing, so I know if you have a malfunction. Oh, if I drop dead, your watch stops. <laughs> no. It goes bleep. It goes bleep. Yeah. Switch on. Press this one once, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, it's on. All right, the monitor says everything's okay. 
I'm cutting you loose. Feel anything? Yeah, like uh, like an elevator drop. No blackout. Yeah, a cold chill though, like a, a wind rushing around me. That could be a phase variation, a slight fluctuation in the frequency. How is it now? Fine, fine. In fact, I feel, I feel great. Well, you should. With a million dollar wristwatch shooting you full of atomic energy. Say goodbye to this. Sam, what are you doing? I'm gonna flicker. You said I could flash on and off, right? Sam! How does it feel? Like a bad case of the hiccups. When you come back to visibility, was there any electric shock? No. I noticed that I have to work harder when I'm invisible. There's a definite sinking sensation. That was your energy running down. So you've got a time limit. Just call Abby. Don't say anything. I want to blow his mind. Sam! Dr. Schuyler, Mr. Rogers. Dr. Lawrence, we're looking for Sam Casey. Uh, he's... I'm sorry, he's not here. Do you have any idea where we might find him? He's gone. Uh, to the X-ray facility. He may have some fractured ribs from the concussion. What did you want him for? We have a couple of questions we want to ask him. Can I help you? Oh, well, we just thought he may know more about the explosion than he's told us, that's all. But he said he can't remember. Perhaps he can. How, by hypnosis? Pharmaceuticals. We may have to take him with us. All right, Dr. Schuyler, we'll take it from here. Mr. Driscoll, what's going on Where's here? Sam? They took him to X-ray for observation. He'll be back soon. Well, Driscoll, we'll leave it in your hands. I'll send you my report. Thank you. That's it, gentlemen. Dr. Lawrence, thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Where is he? He's right here. He's wearing the new stabilizer. Sam, turn it on. I can't. I gotta find his wrist. Here. I got it. What happened? Is there something wrong with the stabilizer? No, it works perfectly, but he's still too weak from the accident. He's got to work up to the time limit. What is the limit? How long can he stay invisible? A maximum of 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Abby, why didn't you tell me that? You didn't give me a chance. You can stay invisible for five seconds, a minute, ten minutes, whatever you want, as long as it adds up to no more than 15 minutes per day. What happens at 16? You pass out, you fade away, and you never come back. That's great. How do you feel? I feel good now, Leonard. I can feel it giving me strength. Just I keep flashing on something. When Skylar and Rogers were in the room while I was invisible, something flashed in my mind. You heard what Mr. Roy said. Yeah, yeah, the uh, SIA figure sabotage. Yeah, what do, you, what do you make of that? I don't know, Leonard. That's what keeps bothering me. I can't put it together. Wait a minute. When I passed out, it was like being under the water again. That red light, the glow that I keep seeing, it was on a small, round canister stuck to the side of the satellite like uh, a warning light as if uh, a timer had been activated a round canister do you know what it was yeah i do leonard it's in the saa training manual under demolitions it's a magnetic mine type r3 r3 well that isn't foreign ordinance the r3 was made in america by royce industries but royce is a dyed in the wool patriot his company handles all kinds of Pentagon contracts. But everyone on that salvage team was an employee of his. Can't just burst in there and accuse Royce. Besides, we don't have any proof. Well, then I'll get us some. You'll never know what snuck up on him. Code name minus one. Sam. Sam, don't do that. I'm just trying to prove a point, Leonard. Now, will you let me loose? I think it's worth a try. OK. Tomorrow we turn you loose. Out of sight! And not before tomorrow.
Well, it's just got to be the most expensive watch band in history. Good morning. Morning. Well, I'll uh, see you later. Where are you off to, may I ask? Got a lot of catching up to do, Leonard. Now, wait, wait a minute. No time, Leonard. I'll call you later. Sam. Call you later. Sam, where are you going? You let me loose, didn't you? Well, I know you're anxious, but you can't just barge in there and accuse Royce. Look, Leonard, it's about this little R3 ordinance item that blew up in my face. I didn't appreciate that. Now, that little magnetic cherry bomb was manufactured by the Royce Industries. It blew up a satellite. It messed up my metabolism. I think that warrants a courtesy call on Mr. Royce, because I want to find out who did it and why. Well, I better come with you, and you'll need Abby to monitor the stabilizer. <laughs> Siamese twins, join at the wrist. Come on, Leonard, I'll give you a ride. Uh, thanks. No, I left my helmet up in my office. Come on in my car. Well, I'll get my suit dirty. What do you have against civilized transportation? <laughs> All right. I'll meet you at Royce Industries in 20 minutes. Abby. Would you explain to him that to get from here to there in 20 minutes would require an average ground speed of 90 miles an hour?
capture. We know how you eluded the law. You used up one minute and 26 seconds of today's quota. Well, that still gives me 13 minutes and 34 seconds in the bank. <sighs> Leonard Driscoll, Intersect. Intersect? International Security Technics. This is Dr. Lawrence, Mr. Casey. We're here to see Mr. Royce. I'm sorry, Mr. Driscoll. I don't have you down on the appointment sheet. Well, we were just in the neighborhood. Yes. Yes. Yes, I'll see them. And ask Dr. Scott and Mr. Rogers to join us in my office. Thank you. Casey's recovered. He's here with Driscoll. Well, they can't know too much. They wouldn't just walk into us. Let's go slow. We agreed to conduct an internal investigation to keep the government out of it as much as possible. We've been working on the problem, but you're not going to like what we found out. You can't remember a thing. Well, not exactly. As a matter of fact, I do recall one thing. Here, I drew you a picture of it. Did you lose one of those? A magnetic mine? U.S. government. R3. Are you saying you saw an R3 made by my company? That's what it says in the Naval Ordnance Contract. Your subsidiary in Long Beach manufactures bomb casings, fuse assemblies, and R3 components. Well, now, I told you what I saw. Suppose you tell me. How did a Royce Industries firecracker get stuck under a Russian satellite? I can tell you the SIA's theory. An agent trained in demolitions put it there. You were the last man down there. Oh, sure. He swam down 60 fathoms, snuggled in close, and blew himself up. He got caught in the reaction. Just a minute. The SIA report says an order was transmitted to someone aboard the Royce Explorer. Prevent satellite recovery. Are you trying to tell me that Sam Casey wandered into the communications room under the noses of the radio operators and picked up a code message? It had to be a member of the crew. Someone with enough authority to use the radio gear without arousing suspicion. Every member of my crew had a security clearance. And every member of the intersect support group had an A6 clearance. Who are you accusing, Driscoll? I'm not accusing anyone. But every member of that dive team is under suspicion. And by implication, everyone in this room. Wait a minute. Don't you try to hang this thing on us. Take it easy. Let's calm down. Sir, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. I've had enough of this, Driscoll. Cover your man if you must, but don't accuse my people. I'm not feeling very well, so I'll have to ask you to leave. Captain Wayland, send in some security guards to escort Mr. Driscoll and associates out of my office. I want them off the premises. I'm sure we can find the way. Hey, you guys. Why don't you go ahead? I'll catch you later. Sam, stop it. You can't do that. Don't worry, Leonard. I'm just going to poke around a little while. That's all. I mean it. Look, Leonard, I came here for a reason. I know what I saw down there. I'm gonna go through this place till I come up with some answers. You don't have time, Sam. You have less than 15 minutes. She's right. It's too dangerous. You do stop worrying. I told you I'm just gonna use my time to get past the guards, that's all. Because I want to find out who planted that mine. I don't care if it turns out to be Royce himself. Okay, but you be careful. Look, I'll meet you at the hamburger stand by the freeway, right? Keep an eye on elapsed time. You're on the clock. All right, Mother Hen. Watch out, here come the security guards. Leonard, I can see them, they can't see me. Now, we don't need an escort, we can find our own way out. Where's the third one? The surfer in the blue jeans. Oh, he left ahead of us. I didn't check anybody out. Did you? No. Nope. Some security system. Stick with him all the way out of the parking lot.
everything's under control, sir. Sir, don't you think you ought to lie down and rest? No, I'll be all right. You know, Driscoll was right. We're going to have to investigate every member of the salvage team, the ship's crew, every man who had access to that radio room. I'll handle it for you, sir. No, sorry, Harold. I'm going to have to supervise this one personally. It's just a routine check. I'll have it for you in 24 hours. I told Driscoll that I'd do it myself, and I'm going to do it. Mr. Royce, don't you think you ought to protect the corporation? What do you think I'm doing? I mean, sir, that I think Driscoll is going to try to put the monkey on your back. He's out to divert suspicion away from Casey, and he's going to use this against you. The R3 is manufactured by Royce Industries. All he's got is Casey's word. Mr. Royce, I think you should get the facts to Washington before Driscoll does a job on you. At least let them know that you are conducting a thorough investigation. That might not be a bad idea. I'll put in a call right away. Mr. Royce, I think that this is too important to call in. I think you should go to Washington yourself. Place a full explanation before the Joint Chiefs. Take full responsibility. They'll trust you and they'll keep the door open. And alert them to potential security leaks within my company. And guarantee containment personally. The name Royce means something in Washington. They'll listen to you. You think Driscoll's out to cut me up? Well, you kicked him out, sir, from the security escort. You've got to protect your corporation, sir. Call Admiral Hartley. Ask him to set up an emergency conference at the Pentagon, including the SIA. I will uh, order the plane right away, sir. Almost five minutes. He'd better start saving it. Don't you think he's strong enough? Oh, yes. He can take the full 15. But it's easier on his system if he breaks it up as much as possible. Well, let's hope he's not in any trouble. Oh, he's back to visibility. I didn't see you come in. You mean you didn't see me following you in there? In there? Well, not all the way in. Um, can I help you? Yeah, do you have an office directory? Who did you want to see? I don't know. Who you recommend? Do you have an appointment? Wait a minute. First things first. All right. First things first, I'd like to see your ID. You can call me Sam. I'm sorry, Sam. You just don't look like an A6. That's the best thing I've heard all day. Wait a minute, I got it. Main building, reception. Gloria Dixon. Hello, Gloria. Who else would you like to see? How about Dr. Schuyler? Hmm. First corridor, second door on the left. That way. Is there something else you want? <laughs> you know where to find me, Sam. Main building reception, Gloria Dixon.
me flight operations, Captain Taggart. I've heard that before, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kirk. <laughs> Never again. Mm. Captain Taggart here. Yeah, this is Dr. Schuyler. How soon can you have the executive jet out on the runway? What's the flight plan? I'll brief you in the operations office. Uh, you're going to need the special crew. We'll be ready for takeoff in 45 minutes. Do it. Let's go. Let's cover the entire building. The gate guard found his motorcycle still in the parking lot. There he is. You two, go on around. Lock him off. Come on. on and off. Well, I've got better things to do than sit here and listen to him beep. All right, Casey, we know you're in there. All right, let's check the other office. Captain Whalen, this is McNeil. Our man just came out of the north exit. Grab him. Hey, you! Stop! second ago. Here where? Here, then here, then here. Get a car. He's heading for the airstrip driving a company truck. Lock him at the freight hangar. Hey, excuse me, pal. Which way is flight operations? Just on the other side of the hangar.
He's only got nine minutes, 34 seconds left. We could be here until midnight. Well, he must be onto something, or he would have come out by now. Mm. Howdy. Howdy. It sure would be great to have one of these babies, huh? Zip down to Acapulco anytime you want, lick the salt off a couple of margaritas. Who are you? Food service. What for? Ah, uh, Dr. Scholar ordered a special menu. Come on, they won't have time to put on their napkins. They got five hours. No way. Well, how long does it take to get to D.C.? Man, you got the wrong airline. This is Mr. Royce's plane, isn't it? Yeah, that's the corporate executive mobile home. Yeah, well, then it's going to National Airport, Washington, D.C., right? With less than 10 tons of fuel? Nah, that takes it to Denver. Well, this has got to be a mistake. Hey, no mistake. Here's the requisition. There's the pilot's signature, Captain Taggart. It's just a routine flight. They're checking out the oxygen system. The flight engineer was just in the cabin reading the pressure. Well, how long you figure they're going to be airborne? Oh, an hour and 20 minutes, give or take headwinds. Thanks. OK. Hey, I'll help you eat some of that special menu. You better get out of it. I can't. Royce is in danger. Royce? Skyler convinced him that he's got to make an emergency flight to Washington, but it looks to me like they're setting him up. In what way? They're going to Denver. Denver? His heart condition. They got to climb out over the mountains at a high altitude. Now all it takes is a slight change in the oxygen system, just enough to bring on a cardiac failure. Wait a minute, I gotta go. Get here as soon as you can, all right? Well, who's on this line? Now, that makes sense. Skyler is executive director. In a perfect position to make deals with enemy governments behind Royce's back. And if Royce dies of a heart attack, then Skyler gains control of Royce Industries. Hang on. I thought you didn't like that car. Operator, this is Security Service Royce Industries. We need the call record on truck mobile MG26. 26 within the last half hour. I was afraid he was playing around like a kid with a new toy. 
toy. Looks like he's onto something. He wants to see me. Sorry to barge in here, Mr. Royce, but there was an emergency. You can't come in here. Tell Driscoll I won't stand for Look, it. Forget Driscoll. I'm on my own time. I do not intend to be pushed around by you or anyone. Now, I've got to go. My plane is waiting. Hey, look, the plane can wait. You've got a problem. Believe me. Get out Believe of me. my way. Tell security to come and get this man out of my office right now. Okay, look. No problem. They're on their way. I'll go peacefully. But before they get here, please, just hear me out. I don't seem to be able to stop you. If you get on that plane... You're not going to get off. And why not? Because you're going to have a heart attack. <laughs> what are you talking about? I travel by air all the time. Royce, I saw the checklist. The pre-flight? That plane hasn't been serviced for a flight to Washington. They're servicing it now. No, no. There's not enough gas. And they've been tampering with the oxygen. Captain Tagger just called to tell me that they're ready and waiting. Royce, they're planning to kill you. <sighs> I'm afraid your accident has affected your mind. Nobody's planning on killing me. I'm sorry, Mr. Royce. They slipped their way from I know, us. I know this sounds crazy. Listen, get him listen, out of here. I'm warning you. Listen to me. Royce, don't get on that plane. Handcuff him. No, no, no. No handcuffs. Look, I said no handcuffs. <laughs> After all. You remembered. Gloria, uh, close your eyes. What? Close your eyes. Where is he? Who? You mean Sam? Yes, I mean Sam Casey. Where is he? Well, he was right here. Maybe he went in there. Los Angeles Center, Royce Industries, flight 229er, leaving 11,000 for flight level 380. 229er, Los Angeles Center. Device flight level 250. 0310. Okay, keep it standard. Settle down. Like a nice long flight. I fixed the fuel record, and if anyone checks, we took off with a full load.
What time did you set the conference? There's an uh, informal briefing at 7. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, off the record, just to fill in the SIA, the formal presentation is for 9 before the Joint Chiefs emergency session. I better prepare my statement. Would you like me to work up a draft? No, come up with some positive notes. I'll call you if I need any research material. Very good. Listen up. There's not going to be any change in the cabin pressure. We're going to handle this by thinning out the oxygen. So deets will pop open your overhead compartments, and you'll be able to use your face masks. Captain Taggart's going to make a routine announcement over the PA system. When you hear altitude 38,000, that's the time to use the oxygen. Right. Let me have it in the scouts room. Okay, take her up nice and steady. We want the flight recorder to be perfect. I think you're gonna need a couple of your pills, Rice. Please don't yell, because then I'll have to stuff a pillow down your throat. And don't press any buttons. How did you get on board? I'll explain all that to you. Let's, let's let those pills take effect. As a matter of fact, you better get ready to take a handful. What do you want? I told you, I want to save your life. I just hope the strain doesn't kill you before I get a chance to. Royce, I don't want to use force on you, so please, just cool it. No calls, no yells. Just hear me out first, all right? All right. What are you going to do? Well, first of all, I'm going to try to convince you that I'm your friend. I know you think the Driscoll is out to destroy your credibility with Washington, but you're dead wrong. Remember when we left your meeting this morning? Yes. I went back into your office. I was there when Skyler pushed you out on this trip. You were where? Sitting on the sofa eating caramels. Caramels? Yeah, you admitted Driscoll was right. And then Vince said that I couldn't possibly have touched that radio equipment. And Skyler told you that you got to protect the corporation, go to Washington yourself, don't send an errand boy, remember? How did you get into my office in the first place? Please, don't ask. But I've got to know. OK. All right. First of all, this is bigger than an A6 clearance would allow. But you leave me no choice in that. This may shake you up, Royce. Are you ready? Ready for what? No, you're not crazy. It's really happening. I'm invisible. I don't understand. We are not alone there. It's an unknown reaction caused by the accident. That's all we know. But we've learned how to control it and put it to pretty good use. At least I hope you trust me now. Because why else would I risk my life to get on this plane with you, huh? I'm beginning to trust you a little, but just one thing. Don't do it again. OK, fair enough. All right. Here's their plan. As soon as we reach cruising altitude, they're going to turn off the oxygen. And you're going to pass out. And your heart can't take that. But why? The men on this plane are loyal to me. No, they're loyal to your money, Mr. Royce. It would appear that Dr. Schuyler has been dealing with the other side. With you out of the way, he takes over control of the store. But it was his idea to get this report before the Joint Chiefs, to force an investigation. No, the idea was to get you up here in the plane. End of report, end of investigation. Beginning of Schuyler's new international corporation. One that peddles arms and classified material to the highest bidder. Come in. Can I get you a drink? Oh, I see you've already got one. Oh, uh, yeah, thanks anyway. Sorry to bother you, Mr. Royce. Thanks for not blowing the whistle on me. I guess you're uh, with me, huh? With you? I'm not even sure you're here. I'm not even sure I'm here. Tell you what, I'll be back in a minute. Hey, uh, what are you going to do? Just sit tight.
he's invisible again. Make it official. It's a takeover attempt at Royce Industries. How much time does he have left? About four minutes. Uh-oh. Dispatch an ambulance, paramedics, cardiac unit, and police backup. Yep. Thirty-six, coming up on him. How many hands is that you want? About three. It's got to be two. Junior yeah. deal. I know that model. Captain Taggart. Thought it might take just a moment to give you some flight information. We're cruising at 38,000 feet. The temperature outside is 47 degrees below zero. Our ETA Washington National Airport is 840. And the weather looks good all the way. It's all from the passenger cabin. Switch on emergency. receiving correctly at this distance. Leonard, that unit could transmit from the moon. It's atomic powered, remember? How long do you want to give him? Long enough to make it look like heart failure. I want to take a look. Hold it, will you? There's somebody in there. What? The boys have got oxygen in there. Let's go. Come on. Anything. All right, all right. Uh -oh. 
Oh, something's wrong. Malfunction! What happened? He was visible with about two minutes left, and now the count is fluctuating up and down. Can you tell what it is? I don't know. Industries, Executive 707. I have an extreme emergency. Listening in on 121.5. Royce 707, this is Los Angeles Center. What is the nature of your emergency? My flight crew has been disabled due to a pressure blowout. I can fly, but I'm not checked out on four engines. Must return to Royce Airport. Royce 707, understand your emergency. Radar contact, 80 miles east of Los Angeles. Can you turn that thing around? Don't know until I try. Can you find either the gyro or the magnetic compass on your instrument panel? All right, now I gotta fix on the gyro. Just get me home. All right. Turn left to heading 270 for vectors to Royce Airport. Can you circle until we get a qualified pilot to talk you in? I don't know if I have time for that, Los Angeles. Can you get a hold of a Dr. Lawrence on Los Angeles Mobile 397? Are you injured? Well, it's kind of hard to explain. I have a malfunction. Say again? Uh, tell Dr. Lawrence I busted my watch. I can't get the door right now. I got my hands full. They're tied up. All right, fine. We're coming down to a safer altitude, so uh, you can take that oxygen mask off. Fasten up your seatbelt and relax. Okay. Royce 707, this is Los Angeles Center. You're doing fine. You're just a little off course. So turn left to heading 255 for straight in approach to Royce Airport. What is your present altitude? Altitude, okay. Okay, hang on just a second. Uh, okay, I found it. Uh, I'm at uh, 8,000 feet and coming down. Good. Descend and maintain 5,000 feet. Anything you say, Los Angeles. Los Angeles, did you reach mobile 397? Dr. Lawrence is on the line. Can you patch her in? Right away. I'm reading you, Sam. Looks like I blew a fuse, Abby. It's the contact circuit. Is it dead or bent? Can't see it. Did you hit it against anything? I hit a lot of things, Abby. How long have I got left? I can't tell. At the last reliable count, it was less than two minutes. So you're pushing past critical. I can't land this thing in two minutes. If you don't, then who will? It's a good question. Royce 707, you're 12 miles from your airport. Tower advises they have assistance for you. Remain on this frequency. Go ahead, Royce Tower. Royce 707, this is Royce Tower. We have a 707 pilot on the runway with a mobile radio. Go ahead, Captain. This is Captain Ballard. How are you doing? Well, we're uh, still up here, Captain. How much flight time do you have? About 1,500 hours, but not one of these things. Are you familiar with jet engines? Not this many. Understand. Are you in the left or right seat? Uh, left seat. Okay, just to your right, between the seats is a console of levers. Those are the jet thruster controls. Have you got them? I uh, got them. Good. Pull them back to about halfway and leave them there for now. Keep the engines in phase. There's no crosswind. You won't have to crab. What's your name? Uh, Casey, Sam Casey. Okay, Sam. We'll bring you in. Just relax. Sure, just relax, yeah.
maintain your present heading and altitude, Sam. Captain Whalen. Whalen here. Uh, this is Madsen. The ambulance, police, and backup units are on their way. Get them out there quick. Yes, sir. Open the gate. Also admit Driscoll and Dr. Lawrence. Driscoll? That's what I said, Whalen. Yes, sir. Let them all in. Beneath the gear lever is the flap lever. It looks just like a miniature flap. It was actually easy when I, uh, I got it. Okay, now push that lever down gently to the 20 degrees detent. No further than 20 degrees for now, okay? Okay, gotcha. Approach, how's he look? Approach control, still hot and slightly right of course. Suggest a heading of two, four, five degrees. Sam, turn, easy now, left, to two, four, five degrees, and watch your airspeed. Pull those thrusters back a little, and hold 160 knots, no slower, understand? Yeah, I understand, 160 knots. Okay, let her down easy. Let her come down another 100 feet. How's it look, Approach? Right down the groove. Captain, it feels like she's starting to mush a little. Flap handle, Sam. Full flaps. Let the nose come down while you're too high. Lose another 100 feet. Easy does it. Man, this is like landing in an apartment building. He's back now, Sam. You're almost down. Start to pull back, Sam. Pull back on, pull back, pull back on the wheel. Easy now, easy on the brakes. Easy, Sam, easy on the brakes. It's too late, his time's run out. We've got to get to him, let's go. <sighs> jammed and he may need help. And hold these men for the SIA. Yes, sir. And there's more back here. Come on. Who am I supposed to help? There's nobody in there. Mr. Rice needs you. I've got the stabilizer. Hurry, it's close to the thing. It stopped. 
Get the cardiac unit. I can't. It's leaving with Royce in the ambulance. I've got it. It works. Get his wrist. You okay, Sam? Yeah. You did it, Sam. You saved Royce. You landed a 707 single-handed. Oh, fantastic. Come on, let's get out of here. Man, I'd sure love to have one of these babies, huh? I just think we can zip down to Tahiti and uh, see if the surf's up. <laughs> How'd you like that, Abigail? <laughs>